there are some interesting insights in that and being the data junkie that I am. Their average height was five foot five and one half inches and their average weight was They're only minus four Celsius. Woo! Woo, third Zwift ride, digging it. That hour and five minutes went by like boom. Big fan. And so far, Wahoo and Wahoo, it's working okay. Stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed if you want to stick around for more Wahoo and Zwift goodness as the off season and training indoors rolls around. See that biking rolling around? It's the off season, so it doesn't really roll around. So now did anyone see that profile that Slow Twitch did on all the pros bikes from Kona? It had like the entire specs. I think the pros had to fill out what they were using. So we've got data on what bike they're using, what size they're using, how tall they are, how much they weigh, what wheels, what rubber they've got on the wheels, the power meter, the hydration bottles. There are some interesting insights in that. And being the data junkie that I am, I put it into a spreadsheet and tried to see if we could figure out some trends. And there are some definite trends. Let me pretty myself up. We'll walk through some of the more interesting ones. All right. I mean, I'm pretty as it is, but we're getting prettier. Prettier. All right, Trainiacs. Uh, for starters, how do I look? Do I look smoother? Do I look more aerodynamic? Do I look like I'd be a faster swimmer? I'm not saying I did give myself a full body shave, but I'm saying I might have. Yeah, look at this, look at this. This is a whole bunch of data. I'm a really big fan of spreadsheets being a former finance nerd. Now for stars, let's talk about the top 10 pro men. That's Patrick Lang, Lionel Sanders, David McNamee, Sebastian Keenley, James Kunama, Terenzo Bazone, Andy Potts, Patrick Nelson, Ben Hoffman, Boris Stein. Their average height is just under six feet tall and their average weight is just under 160, coming in at about 159.5 pounds. So they're tall and lanky. The two most common bikes amongst the men were the Canyon Speed Max CFSLX and the Cervelo P5X. There are only two of each, so it's not like there's one bike that's really dominating the others. And those two bike companies are spending a ton of money getting their bikes underneath pros undercarriages. So don't read into that a whole lot. But here's where we start getting into a few of the things that we can pull out from the data. There's not a whole lot of consistency in which front and rear wheels these athletes used. However, there is a big trend towards Continental Grand Prix 4,023 mil tires. That's that tire right there. Why I've selected this tire might be the same reason that a lot of the pros have selected this tire. This tire is really, really good for racing. It's got a low rolling resistance, but it's not also so brittle that you're gonna risk punctures. When you're going on 180K, basically self-supported ride, you don't wanna risk a lot of punctures. I myself have a 23 mil front tire and a 25 mil rear tire so that the rolling resistance on the rear is quite a bit less than on the front, whereas the front is more aerodynamic because of that narrow wheel. We didn't see that with the men. Just wait, however. The most common group set by far was the Shimano Dura-Ace Di2 with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight of the 10 athletes are placed in the top 10 in Kona racing on that group set. And then the two other things that we can pull out from this data is that the most common saddle with one, two, three athletes riding it is actually our new friends over at Cobb. I believe that this Cobb 55 had two athletes and then another model of the Cobb saddle had the third athlete. Apparently they know what they're doing, Cobb. And ceramic speed pulleys and bearings on the rear derailleur of the bike is something that one, two, three, half of the athletes used. Now ceramic speed, I ended up showing a Facebook Live when I was at Interbike and the difference between the spin and the drag on a ceramic speed bearing versus a traditional bearing. Apparently there's something to it or maybe ceramic speed is sponsoring a ton of athletes. 
All right, now getting into the top 10 women, we're talking about Daniela Reeve, Lucy Charles, Sarah Crowley, Heather Jackson, Kesa Sally, Susie Cheatham, Carrie Lester, Liz, Lyle, Annabelle, Luxford, and Jocelyn McCauley. Their average height was five foot five and one half inches, and their average weight was just under 122 pounds. Seeing any sort of correlation between size and performance, we don't really see that. Daniela Reef is actually a fairly tall, fairly muscular athlete. So of anyone in the top 10, it looks like Daniela Reef is actually the tallest and the heaviest. She's jacked. With the bikes that they rode, the felt and the specialized shiv again had two each. I told you that you needed to hang on. The interesting thing about the female riders is that Again, we don't see many trends in which wheel sets they're using, but we saw a very big trend in wider tires. So there are 24s, 25s, and there are even a 28 mil wide tire on Daniela Reef's rear wheel. Now, this is kind of counterintuitive when I think about it because I think that the, the best bang for your buck on wider tires is that because the tires are wider, the say so it doesn't squish as much onto the ground, thus you get better rolling resistance. The more you weigh, the more the tire is going to squish on the ground with male athletes being heavier than the female athletes. I would have thought that it was actually the opposite, but like basically across the board, almost everyone had at least one tire that was wider than the standard 23 mil. Again, with the group set, Shimano DI2 ran away with the count with over half of the athletes again using that group set. And everywhere else with the bike computer, with the crank length, with the design of the bottles, with the saddles, there was no single trend that I could pick out. Besides, again, ceramic speed rear pulleys being used by six out of the 10 athletes. Okay, so what are the things that we can pull out from this that we can apply to our riding? Well, certainly look at trying ceramic speed. Now they are damn expensive. I think I might try to reach out to them as we're doing a new bike build that's coming up. Hint, hint, be subscribed if you wanna see that. It's very exciting and I am jacked about this new bike. Shimano DI2 still seems to be the gold standard in group sets that are electronic, even with SRAM ETAPs coming out and apparently being awesome, but we just don't see athletes using it. Take a look at wider tires and don't stress about being the lightest you can possibly be in a race and getting the exact right setup dialed in because we see that there are a huge number of exact right setups based on the different athletes' preferences. And figure out what works for you and you can only do that by training a lot. Oh, and by the way, if you train a lot, you're gonna get a lot faster as a bonus. So that was interesting. That was very, very interesting. If you're interested in seeing this spreadsheet, um, comment below and let me know that you're interested in seeing the whole thing and I'll send you the link to it. We can do that. Now, we are insulating Triathlon Terran HQ. It's coming along, folks. Come see, come see. Oh, it's downright balmy in here, only minus four Celsius. Woo! All right here, gang, we almost got the thing insulated. We got that wall, not done. We got that wall, half done. We got that wall done, like hour away from having this done. Just running out of light. We will have many more lights once it's all done. Let me lit the F up. Lit up! Hey, Traniacs. Going inside to warm up. Full on comforter on the couch time. And Stranger Things. Oh, it's good. It is so good right now. 